All right, uh, this is Daniel Posny, and this is Shifting Perspectives. And today I'm going to talk about uh, how and why I love myself. And I really do. And, um, but it's not in a way that, um, that you might be accustomed to. It's not because I'm really good at something or what I've done in the world or what I've not done in the world. It's, it doesn't have much to do with um, this physical world. So let me do my best to explain this because this, this way of looking at it is such a profound way for me because it's not something that's easily understood. If it was easily understood, it would be of the mind and that would be susceptible to my own mind. So uh, I'll do my best to, to explain this. Um, trying to love myself from the thoughts of myself is actually the source of the problem. So this part of me that doesn't love myself, even if I do something amazing, uh, it's still not enough, or yeah, I did it wrong, or something like that. So I can't have it be something, anything related to my thoughts, because then I'm susceptible to this lube. It's like a hamster on a wheel, just keeps on going and going. And, uh, you know, I should feel good about myself and I feel crappy about myself for some silly reason. Or maybe it's a reason that goes back into childhood trauma or maybe goes into something that someone once said about me. So anything related of my mind can't be about how I love myself. So more of loving myself is, I think about this that, I was having this thought the other day that I am here on this earth. You're here on this earth right now. Right now, uh, Abraham Lincoln isn't here. George Washington is, isn't here. Um, you know, those, those people that you've heard about aren't on the planet, but you are. I am. And uh, I've, got, I've got one shot in this body. And, you know, I may have other shots in other bodies and other um, times and that kind of thing. But in this body, in this rendition of me right now I have this one thing and I'm here and at least I look it looks like I'm here I'm here on this planet and and I've been told that this planet is in space and it's you know <laughs> all these things start, start to come to my mind and I start thinking wow what a privilege what a privilege it is to be here because I won't be here forever you won't be here forever and at least in this body so I start thinking about that. Okay, all right, all right. I've got this one shot and, and how do I wanna work this? How do I wanna look at myself here? And it's, that's what kind of motivates me here is that uh, I am here doing something, evolving, creating, expressing, whatever it is I'm doing here, but I'm here. And that kind of goes, okay, how do I do this? Well, I've got this body. I've got this body to work with. I got this character named Daniel. And he sees the world in a certain way, and he doesn't see it in other, other ways that other people see it. And he's kind of goofy that way. And God, I love that. And uh, so my soul um, is, from what I understand, my soul is expressing, evolving, creating through different bodies throughout all time with certain themes that are connected with this soul. And it's, it's working things out, it's playing things out, it's healing over here and creating over there. And um, there's certain energies that are part of that soul. Of course, it's connected to the over soul or in, into the one being and, you know, we can go on into that. But, but for my purposes, my soul has a certain energetic, emotional purpose. And uh, I am perfect for that, for, for getting into shit, to, to getting into trouble, to um, making the wrong steps, to make mistakes as a parent and as a husband, I'm the perfect one. <laughs> and I'm also the per perfect one to, like, I really love uh, digging into things, digging into myself. Um, I, I love the feeling of liberation and freedom, like liberating myself from my own chains. And for my soul, the soul goes, yep, I picked the right one. And for you, your soul has picked the right one. And it's not that the soul picked the one that never made any mistakes. 
the soul didn't pick the one that was the enlightened being from the from birth the soul picked the one and is a is a perfect match for that character for that body you the the character i guess the best way to say it, the character that you are the perfect one to create these problems and create these solutions and um, be the, the, the working hands and the moving feet and, you know, all those things that need to be had while you're in this physical realm. Uh, look at what you're doing right now. Right now you're evolving. Right now you're, at least if anything, you're getting a different perspective. And this, you, know, you, can, you can kind of feel the soul going, yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah, okay. Don't agree with that part, but agree with, you know, it's this energetic um, connection, attraction to like-mindedness or energy and, and um, perception. And so right now you're doing it. You're kind of, you attracted yourself to a certain perception and you're evolving through that. And that's awesome. And the soul goes, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're evolving. So I just want to put those two concepts out there. Um, why do I love myself now more than ever? Um, it's not only because I became a better, more authentic person who is more in integrity. It's not just because I showed up differently. It's because I know myself differently. Before I knew myself by my accomplishments and what my mind told me. But now... I would say um, what, how I love myself is not, it's not predicated on what I do or what I don't do. I still make mistakes, but I love my th myself through those too. And uh, it gets into this realm of, I need to take a deep breath. It gets into the realm of um, something that I can't prove something that is like a spiritual kind of theory, but I want to try my best to explain it. I've chosen to accept and embrace my light above all else. And my mind is back there trying to tell me otherwise. And still, I embrace my light. And my mind tells me, who are you to embrace your light? You're not all light. And I go, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm not all light. And I'll love that too. How about that? And the mind goes, damn it. <laughs> and then, then the mind goes, but what about all the darkness inside of you? What about the rage that you had, the anger that you've had, and, and the things that you've done, and the pain that you cause? And I say, yeah, it's hard. I'm going to love that too. And not love it as in I'll do more of it. It's just that wow, yeah, this life can be painful, but I'm going to love that guy because he keeps on going through this. He goes through his pain and his, and his suffering moments and his uh, mind, mucky mind. And, he, and I, just, I just feel that, yeah, I'm going to love that too. And on top of that is that if we go even a little deeper, all the pain that I've ever caused to my own kids, to my wife, to my girlfriend, to my friends, I know without, um, let's see, with deep compassion and empathy and tenderness, I know it wasn't all me. I know that when I've done things to people that have caused pain and suffering, is we were all in the same room together. And I have a lot of compassion for that, but I don't lay it all on myself. You know, I'm doing the best that I can at the time with the consciousness that I had, and you were doing the same thing. But when we, I would see, I, I kind of stay away from the word or the phrase, I caused pain. I was involved in pain, and I was a part of that. But there's another person that's also a part of that, and they were also in the same kind of energetic connection with that. We were in, I would say, we were in the same room. So that's the part that I look back at my life and I say, yeah, man, I've done some crap in my life and I'm really, oh, I've hurt some people. And from that, I know that there, there's people also in the same room with me. And we hopefully both learn from that. And if we didn't learn from that experience, we probably had another experience that hit it home even stronger. So 
I don't take it all on my mind that I'm supposed to get everything perfectly. I don't mm -hmm. on my mind that I'm supposed to do everything right. I know that God, universe, creator takes care of all that. And I'm just, I'm a player here. And I go through the motions, but it's not being guided specifically by my mind and my actions. So that's why I don't love myself through my mind and my actions. I love myself through that which animates my form, that which causes that, that not even causes this, that's there in all moments and all time as pure awareness. And now we're getting a little deeper here, but this is something I, I can't not talk about is that's where my love comes from is that there's this there's this awareness of my body and myself and my personality and my character and i can choose to be aware of hatred of myself i can be i can choose to be in love with myself but the common thing through both of those is awareness that's where I want to go. That's where I want to stay in is that awareness, that loving awareness. Even the, so you can't get away from it. Even when you're, when you're aware of not loving yourself, there's always awareness. <laughs> That's where my head just goes, wow, there's no way I can get past loving myself. If I, if I stay in that truth, everything else is this perception of the mind. But if I stay in this the thing that is common and true and always permanent is this awareness. So yeah, even in those times when I'm not living myself, I'm still aware of it, right? Even those times when I, I've had rage, I'm aware of rage. Wow, what is that? <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm chasing my tail in a sort of way that I can never get away from that loving awareness, no matter what happens. And I guess that's the best way to if I can explain why and how I love myself, it comes from that place. No matter what I do, of course, I'd never want to do any harm. Of course, I want to stay in compassion and empathy. But where my love comes from is this awareness of compassion, that awareness of empathy, awareness of anger and rage and being pissed off. That's where my, I keep on coming back to that. That's where I come to love, to loving myself. That's something that never goes away. So how about if we do a little, little meditation? We can see if we can, uh, we will get into some of that. So go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and close your eyes. And we'll just let this happen. I want to take you back to when I was talking about you're on this planet. And if you've been here a little while, you probably um, heard of, and known people that have passed and are no longer on this planet. And that, that right there just makes this, this life so precious that there is death involved or perceived death involved. There's this birth and there's this death and there's this stuff in between. And you're still here. <laughs> You're on this planet. There's going to be a time when you in this body as this person with this name are not going to be on the planet. The planet will have to go on without you. Or maybe there is no planet. Who knows? But you won't be on it. <laughs> so what is this you? This you that's walking and talking and learning and moving and all those things. This you that has reaction to the world differently than other people. This you that has these needs and these requirements for life that maybe other people don't have. So you, uniquely you, look at the world in a specific way. You're like a, a sliver of the one being in this this one specific perception and everything shows up to you in front of you around you in this specific way related to your sliver of perception wow everything reflects back to you in a certain way because of what you put out
Now imagine what it would be like without that body. That you wouldn't have a body. And then you do. And then you don't. <laughs> and then you do. And then you don't. You might think about that happening every time you take a breath. Take a breath, you've got your body. You let go, you don't have a body. <laughs> you go to sleep, you don't have a body. You wake up, you have a body. Sometimes you might, you might think about this too. You sometimes think about that you're so affected by the world that it causes you to tear your shirt open. And then you're glad that you're here. You've grown accustomed to this body and the way that the brain and the mind thinks and perceives. And these toes and these fingers and this hair, well, most of it <laughs> has been with you the entire time and will, will be with you to the very end, to the last microsecond as you let go of your last exhale. And although you've replaced every cell in your body every 11 months or so, you keep on recreating the body over and over and over. And when you're done recreating the body, you won't need it anymore. But it's this body, this personality, this character, which gives you this rich experience. And I hope you're blessed with a rich experience, a little bit of pain, Lots of love, a little bit of suffering, lots of love. The world is not the same without you. Without you, the world will have to cope. Somebody else will have to fill your position. But while you're here, you fill a certain position here. You're, you're a missing piece in the puzzle, not by what you do. You bounce your energy off of people all the time. You think about people and send them energy all the time. And people feel that energy. You have an effect on the world, like the butterfly effect. And I love that about myself. I love knowing and not knowing how many people I've affected over the years. Not by just my good deeds, but my, my terrible deeds as well. That caused me to be a catalyst for their healing maybe for their pain and suffering at first, but for their healing. We just don't know what's happening out there in the cosmic realm of energy. And you're doing it, you're, you're part of that. Again, not by your your doing and your saying and your actions in the world that make you look like a good person to a certain society. And you being you. We can't even talk about the unknowns that are happening right now. The things that are being put into play things that are being moved around just by us sitting here. 
That's the part that I love about myself. And if I can put that, the love of myself and all the parts of myself into that, I have an effect on the world. There's only one part of you that doesn't want to love yourself, and that's your mind. Stop listening to it. Stop feeding it. Realize that you created it. It will never, hardly ever, tell you something good about yourself. <laughs> your heart will. Your heart will perceive and, and give you feelings about how good it feels about you but your mind is not really made that way. So you can open your eyes if you like. I just wanna tell a little story and I'll end with this. There's a, a scorpion that wants to cross a little creek. And uh, if he tries to cross, he's gonna be rushed downstream. So he. He sees a frog and asks the frog if he can go on his back and, and the frog can swim across the little creek and take him across. And the frog gets nervous and he says, what are you talking about? You're a scorpion. I, I can't trust you. You're going to kill me. And then the scorpion says, no, I won't. I just, I just want a, uh, a way across the stream here. And he convinces him. And so the frog puts the scorpion on his back and he gets him halfway across the stream and the, and the scorpion stings him. <laughs> Stings the frog, and the frog is dying on the, the side of the, the creek bed there. And he says, what did you do? I can't believe you just stung me. Why did you sting me? And the scorpion says, I'm a scorpion. That's what I do. <laughs> we expect something different from our mind, and it's not what our mind does. We can act like we're giving these positive affirmations, and we spit them out again, and we say them to the mirror. But our true way of the mind is not to um, take that as a permanent transition. <laughs> you know, you may try and train the mind, but it's, it's uh, the, the best way that I found to um, come into the truth of my being is to not use my mind in that way. It's not really what the mind is good at, the, the, especially what I'm talking about is the ego of mind. Egoic mind likes to live in these energies of fear and worry and blame and shame and regret and resentment. And I love that too, <laughs> but it's not going to run my life. Thank you so much. I love you. Bless you. And uh, I hope this helps in your day. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you.